Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at the level 1 Enterprise POE 28 port switch. What a mouthful that is. Talking of mouthfuls, let's talk about the name of this device straight off the back and that is GTP2881. Again, nice product, genuinely good product, awful name. Maybe work on that one. Nevertheless, today we're going to be overviewing the 28 port enterprise level switch. We've got another video coming up after this where we will be comparing it against a Netgear similar alternative, another 28 port PoE, 10 GBE and 1 GBE enabled switch. But today's video is really just to show you what you can actually do with the level one switch. We're gonna have a look at a lot of its features, its software back end, and see just some of the configuration options that we can do to the ports. We've connected a PoE camera to this device. Alongside that, we've connected a laptop that's gonna be exchanging packets of data, but we have disconnected the internet. I don't know if you can see that on the bottom of the screen, probably not, it might be just off camera, but we've disabled the internet because I want you to see this switch as a closed network system. We've also not updated the firmware on this device. We're going with the static firmware because although there has been a couple of new releases of this firmware since, they've been quite small. And I wanted to show you guys the default setup off the bat because so many users do not want their device to interact with the internet for any um, specific reason. And firmware updates you can download privately and upload if you choose. But I will show you the update options later on. But without further ado, let's log into our device. Unsurprisingly, by default, the login is admin admin, and of course, 192.168.11 standard home IP to get into it by default. But do remember if you're connecting via separate sub networks, or if you're connecting this, uh, this switch to a router, and then that router to the internet, then um, things might be different if you're coming in via the router rather than directly through the switch like I am today. But nevertheless, here is our system information screen. And as we can see, loads of information here. This is not for the faint-hearted. Lots of configuration options here straight off the bat. Lots of information about firmware and hardware. And we've got lots of information about PoE already to go through here on the side. I'm going to go through lots of these options. And I'm going to kind of highlight a number of them. But although I'm not going to talk about every single one, be it that, that it's far too technical for this video, or because it will undermine the video that I'm currently working on, uh, Networking for Dummies, where I'm going to start talking about every single one of these configuration options. I recommend you check that out if it has been published. But I'm going to go through every option just to make sure that I cover every single screen and hopefully help you guys decide whether this switch is exactly what you need for business. But we've got the system screen here and again, we can go through the different IPs and MAC addresses of devices that are connected to this. Loads of historical information here. And again, everything from DNS to IP routes, and even whether you want to make this DHCP or fixed all the way through is open to you. We can go into the log options here, which will give you lots of information about how I've been utilizing the device in the background and preparing it for first time utilization on YouTube here. And there's even information with regards to individual port history as well. We can even go into even further detail here, going through page after page, date after date, to find out more information about your network switches, health and environment over time. As you can see, some of the power is already being consumed by that connected PoE switch, giving us an idea of the overhead right now. You can even see here a little bit more information just by hovering over them, how things are being consumed and what is being consumed in real time, with port two here being our PoE switch. So you're going to be able to see a lot more information here about individually connected devices. But remember, we are talking about some quite high technical stuff. Now, moving forward, we've moved away from the system options there. We can configure some of these different things within our network. As you can see, right now we've got connected port and an overview of those ports, including those 10 GBE ports there at the bottom. You can even configure a number of these ports if you choose to be more economical with power or give them port priority, which we'll talk through later on. With the traffic overview, we can take a look at packets of data, and as you can see here, this is when I tested internet connectivity on the switch before this video began. On the last port, I connected this to an internet source, exchanged some packets of data with an online server, and then disconnected the ports. As you can see, it did record a lot of that information, even though that port is no longer connected on port 24. We can even go through and look at quality of service options and quality of service statistics. There's a huge amount of information readily available to you to let you assign priority to any given port. And remember, any port 
can be highlighted and focused on in greater detail to look at the information available recorded for that port. Moving through a lot of these options, we can look down to changing about how dynamic our server, I'm sorry, our switch is with regard to exchanging information and connected devices on the local area network, but also what we want to hide from, what we want to block. We can even go through and go through different devices that have tried to hack into our network or have erroneously tried to assert dominance within our network with regard to data being exchanged between devices. And again, lots of information that goes into some real heavy detail there, as you would expect from a more technical device such as this. Moving forward, we've got all of, these, all of this information with regards to security, allowing us once again to monitor our network, change different security protocol to individual ports, individual networks, and even on our virtual networks that we'll talk about later on in the virtual LAN section. But again, we can go down to the port security, and we can assign new priorities to each of these connected areas and allow us to create very bespoke security protocol for our internal networks. Moving forward, we can look at all of these other areas where we can talk about, port once again, port security or which ports are allowed to have priority of service over others in the grand scheme of things. Now, loop protection, which generally refers to the idea of Diddy OS and stopping people spamming. It does help to assign ports individually one by one to this area. If you think there's going to be repeated network um, exchanges at any given time. Now, if we go to the spanning area, we can take a little look at how these devices are laid out on our network. We can look at port statuses. We can even create a whole set of rules about how and when data is exchanged by looking at statistical data. We can even carry on and look at more interesting and a little bit more graphical data if we want, where we can do a topo topographical view of those connected devices. So as you can see here, straight away, we can have a look at the camera. Right now, because it's not been set up, we can get a far more graphical display that's a lot easier to understand overall. If we make our way into, for example, the login for that camera there, we can log directly into this switch if we so choose. So we go into there, we're setting up the camera for the first time. We'll have a look, well, we've got to set it up. We'll go for the username password. And we're gonna do an overview of this camera in a future, in a future video coming up soon. Oh, I've got to make sure we've got some characters in it. And we can set this camera up for the first time. And we can go all the way through where this will be configuration options within the camera itself. But I'm going to leave those off for when we do our software overview video of that level one connected camera, which right now is producing that live view that we'll come to later on. But as you can see, this point of view here makes things a great deal easier to see. Here's the system that we're currently using right now. We can even go into a little bit more information about the connected device and assign rules to this connected device if we so choose. So we can select this switch and then say what we want the switch to do every time this device is connected. And it's nice that we've got these two options up here, this incredibly technical list of configuration options here, but as well as a far more graphical and easy to manage area of the view. So we can even assign a physical uploaded EMAP if we have one available, or we can do ones for whole buildings where devices are on a certain uh, network of different floors. <coughs> Sorry about that, bit of a sore throat. Um, so again, going back to the far more uh, technical view, we can look at some of those configuration options and let's make our way to the POE section. Now in the POE section, we can assign several things. You've heard me say the word time and time again, but I will say it again. You can assign priority of POE here. You've got around uh, 100, I believe it's 185 watts on this device to play with and a maximum of 30 watts per each port. So you're allowed here to be able to configure which devices are gonna have priority. So our camera is connected to port two, for example. And at the moment, it's got the maximum 30 watt support here. Had our camera been set up, 
we could then minimize this if we so choose to the maximum wattage of that camera. Alternatively, if we've got other low profile devices such as IOP phones, um, sorry, um, POE phones or POE sound systems that are more for alerts and alarms, we can ensure that they are not going to interrupt the overall draw needed for certain high end cameras. You can even set power delays and scheduled profiles that make sure that, for example, you have cameras consuming and having priority over power while your business has the doors closed over weekends and evenings, but during the day ensure that power is diverted um, primarily towards phones and communication devices for your customers. Moving forward, we can look at the list of connected devices via the Mac table and see what exactly has connected to um, your device over time. We can even look at the profiles of each individual port and see how and what's connected over time. With virtual LAN or VLANs, we can create sub-networks within our switch. So on our 24 port switch, create individual sub-networks therein that allow you to um, make sure that groups of connected users can only access the um, virtual LAN network that you create. So at the moment, we can create individual subset networks, maybe for our 10 gigabit Ethernet ports, maybe for our 1 GBE ports, all within this device. With private LANs, they'll allow you to create um, more um, enterprise level LAN networks or guest networks as you need. Now, voice VLA, uh, VLAN is one for if you're going to connect a number of those um, audio devices as well. This allows you to create those sub-networks which once again will not only have priorities with regards to power consumption but will also manage traffic a great deal better. And if your business is utilizing uh, voice equipped PoE devices you're going to see a lot of benefits there. QoS or quality of service rules allow you to make sure that your system of ports um, are assigned with the individual ports that are going to the most important devices, servers or more, or IP cameras of course, have priority when your bandwidth is under heavy use. Port mirroring allows you to make sure all ports are paired and bonded together or at least mirroring one another to ensure failover protection or to increase a more or create a more efficient network environment for devices on those mirrored ports. You can also control um, sharing across your network by changing UPnP configuration options. For those that have ever utilized file sharing and file casting across networks, you'll be very familiar with UPnP. Uh, sorry, UPnP, yeah. There's loads of other options here with more monitoring rules as well that allow you to control live a number of the things happening within your switch at any given time. This doesn't even talk about a number of the security protocols that are available straight off the bat on this enterprise level switch for business. The diagnostic options will allow you to double check your network environment as well as run individual tests within it to make sure things are running okay, exchanging pings and packets of data between connected devices, as well as uh, analyzing the diagnostics and the information present when you do it to make sure you can see where improvements or repairs need to be made on your network environment. Of course, the maintenance options allow you to change things from the ground up, allowing you to change and modify a number of the rules in the back end between the internet source and your network environment which is going to be quite key for those that want to create a bunch of firewalls but still want access to the internet as best they can. And of course, you can reset the device to all of its um, defaults straight off the back. Now, heading back to the DMS here, we are allowed to see a lot more information about our device in real time. We can even access online, so internet access to our switch remotely, which a number of business users will certainly take advantage of. There's an argument to and from that when it comes to create a private network having um, external configuration access, but I think as long as you create enough security credentials in between, you should be absolutely fine. And of course, you can get rid of that option of the side menu whenever you need it. Now, when it comes to utilizing this switch in a business sense, I would say that you're going to need a dedicated IT guy. It's easy to look at options like this in the DMS mode that present you with very chewable and user-friendly options and hide all of this high-end tech stuff here. 
but you're really not going to get your 800 to 1,000 pounds worth of investment in this switch if you're only going to use the DMS. Use the DMS mode to take advantage and see a lot of the kind of primary, slightly novice or amateur options, but know that you are going to have to make the jump over to the more enterprise level options there in the background. For example, these are devices that have been configured in the past and we can see how they're online and when and how they've been offline over time. We can even move further along and assign these devices on that physical EMAP we described earlier if we upload an EMAP icon. Now, you can do all the changes of password. You've got that graphical monitoring tool there that allows you to lay out the entire switch. And the more devices you connect and the more subnetworks you connect to, such as this one with the internet connection here, if we connect the internet source here, we are allow we will see all the connected devices that were connected to that router or sometimes modem right here. So we can see two devices here that are connected via the router interface. And with that camera interface there, allowing us to see lots more information on the connected devices over time as well as statistically in the past present and future even changing and adding bespoke login information for each of those connected devices even third party ones it's pretty impressive indeed and allows you to create an entire profile network of connected devices on the level one switch i'm going to wrap things up here because it's time to compare this against the network switch from netgear uh, the other 28 port, technically 24 port switch to see how these two brands compare in our comparison. Perhaps there's something you want to see in that. Maybe there's something I've missed in this. Maybe there's a question you have about this switch that I've got the answer to. Do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this. Click subscribe to learn more and I'll see you next time.